Chris, what's going on? I have been here visiting Washington DC for the past uh, day. I had a lecture that I gave all day today and a question came up that was kind of interesting. And I figured that it would be a good place to discuss it right here in front of the Washington Monument because it really gets to the core of the issue that I want to discuss. Recently, if you recall, we had a symposium at Harvard Dental School called the Krakow Symposium in which Dr. Annabel Diogenes, uh, one of the forefront uh, researchers in our field, gave a presentation. And I had a conversation with the um, postdocs because in the presentation, Dr. Diogenes explained potentially a best kind of a preparation for root canal therapy would be one in which you actually take a large sized file and can go slightly past the apex. So you're actually enlarging the apex and then filling the um, space a little bit short of the full preparation. And a lot of the residents were kind of infatuated or in intrigued by such a concept and wanted to have a conversation about it. And today it came up also in the presentation that I was giving. And I wanted to kind of just kind of uh, sit here right next to the Washington Monument to talk about this kind of a misunderstanding of what that concept is all about. As I have always explained, the main goal of endodontic instrumentation along with irrigation is not only to reduce the microbial burden and remove the biofilm, but to scrape off that last bit of the last apical three millimeter of the root of the biofilm that is persistent on the canal wall. In order to do that, you need to gauge the apical diameter and then be able to use a large enough apical uh, master file so that it's going to essentially clean up that area. And the analogy that I use today as well is the idea is in order to clean that space, it's akin to using a knife, which would be then the equivalent of the, the, the cutting edge of your nitro rotary instrument. Uh, and now you're taking a burnt toast and you're trying to scrape off that burnt toast off of that. And that's what the files do. So if that larger apical diameter is present, it's going to have a better chance of making sure that the biofilm is actually removed from that cord out out of that apical three millimeter. However, it comes at a price and the key with this whole issue and the misunderstanding that it seems like we have is that people think that that apical diameter would have to extend beyond the apical constriction. Now, if we imagine that we have an apical constriction at the end of the road, the goal becomes to maintain that constriction to the, to the extent that is possible and then create a much larger preparation inside of the root canal, not blowing through the constriction. And there, the, the, the misunderstanding here is that, well, why can't we just blow through the constriction and then fill short and that should just work out fine? Why not, right? I mean, after all, if you've been able to clean it out completely, filling out the root short after being fully clean is really no different than regeneration, right? I mean, that's essentially tissue growing back inside the roots and that could do a good job. And that is true that it could potentially do that. The only problem here is that not only we don't know if we've fully cleaned out the canal, but also as you blow out through the constriction, what you end up dealing with is the problem of seal. Now, the larger the hole that your system has from one side of the canal to the other, the more difficult it is to seal it. And that's just basic geometry because what is a, a perimeter of a circle, right? It's two pi r. So as you are increasing the diameter through which you are uh, enlarging the apical construction, all of a sudden you're increasing that perimeter by a couple of folds. And the problem with that is that that means you have a far greater area to seal and a far greater area where your seal could fail equivalent, you know, equally. So, here, the keeping of the apical diameter to a minimum is important. However, just a little bit above that, having that apical constriction, which in a very, very early video that I made for you guys, I had called apical resistance form, which prevents your cone from going further out. You can prepare a fairly large shape, and that's the equivalent of this guy's shape. That's the Washington Monument shape that had been kind of you know, touted for the longest time in the night is the proper shape, where the tip of that Washington Monument would be uh, essentially kissing the constriction. And then just a little bit above that, you end up having a much larger preparation. Now, this is in contrast to the shape that the vertical condensation people have been talking about, which is a constant taper preparation from the, the with the minimum preparation of the constriction. The problem with that is that since the shape, the, the actual histological shape of many root canals is in fact a little bit wider right at the apex, having a constant taper shape with a minimum diameter at the constriction means that you leave a little triangle 
of unclean dense and potentially biofilm right at the apical area. So that's why I think that that potential shape is not adequate and that we instead of having an 06 taper preparation with a very thin tip that Dr. Schiller used to say size 15 or 20 at the very construction of the RT with a constant taper, I'm just saying maybe we should pull that in inside the construction and in this shape try to create a much larger apical diameter which would be a 30, 35, 40 or even a 50 but inside the canal and then that little tiny space that may be left from the tip of that shape to the constriction that could get cleared out during your recapitulation or apical patency. Or if you are doing adequate uh, ultrasonication and irrigation adequately, that that space would get cleaned out anyway, and you're not going to put a lot of debris in there, you know, basically known by the fact that oftentimes you do get a little bit of a puff, uh, which means that that is actually being cleared out. Anyway, this is a conversation which I'm sure is gonna confuse the heck out of most people, because it's kind of very, very detailed and very specific to a given point. But what I'm trying to say is that blowing through the construction does not serve any good purpose and that's not what we should be trying to do because we're going to increase the potential for leakage problem as well as potential injury to the apex and potential for all kinds of post-operative issues and pushing more debris out, pushing hypochlorite out and uh, a lot of different uh, you know, things that may not be as beneficial as the idea of just having a very large apical preparation. Having a logical preparation is important as long as that preparation is inside the constriction and not blowing through the constriction. I hope that makes sense. This is exactly what makes endodontics a precise profession and that's why that little tiny half a millimeter of blowing through the constriction or not is where the game is at and the difference between people who are meticulous and very, very precise in terms of where they clean up so they have less post operative pain as opposed to those who practice with patency and large apical preparations through the construction in which the patients are going to have about a three weeks uh, of follow-up pain that tends to be the sequelae of this type of preparations and obturations and instrumentation. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about here from the beautiful nation's capital in Washington, D.C. with the Washington Monument in the background and a beautiful lake here in the up front. I hope this was interesting to you or important to you and maybe we'll elaborate on it but please keep that in mind. You want the apical diameter and the gauging of the apex to be as large as possible, as long as it's safe. That's the limiting factor. So getting to a size 30, 35, 40, and 50 are the sizes that you want to try to get to, but obviously customized with that specific canal that you're dealing with and the specific shape curvature that is present so that you don't end up causing other procedural errors. Alrighty guys, that's it from the Washington Mall and heading uh, back to the hotel. I'm going back to Boston uh, tomorrow morning uh, for Real Gundam Ali and say. Until next video, let's save some people.